Hi everyone, very good afternoon and welcome to the next microbiology high yielding session. So as per the discussion with all of you yesterday over telegram and deciding on what topics to take up further. So I've decided that day 7 and day 8 are going to be two very short 20 minute each sessions on general virology. So we finished a very significant portion of general microbiology in our high yielding session. We finished a lot of questions on mycology that is fungal organisms. So two days on the most high yielding questions on general virology with mnemonics is something which will help us in the exam and let's get going with it. Okay, so first, uh, it, as I said, these are going to be 20 minute sessions each and uh, we are trying to keep it as short as possible and my primary focus will be on all the inclusion bodies that you see in virology. It will be on the classification of the different viruses that we have. Apart from that, how do they replicate? What is their mode of replication? Further, what are their electron microscopic images that you need to know? What are the methods of quantification of viruses? What are the different growth means? media or you can say the cell lines that we have in viruses. So these are what I'm primarily targeting with a lot of mnemonics which is useful for your virology. These are what are the high yield topics on which you know you can expect questions in the exam. So let's get going guys. First what we're going to do I'm going to make you answer two or three questions like I'm starting with the bodies. I'm going to make you answer two or three questions then I teach you all the bodies. So the first set of questions that I'm going to ask you all of these are PYQs so you're practicing a significant portion of the same. So if they ask you where do you see the Tories bodies, these are inclusion bodies seen in. So the way you write Tories and you have a double R in it, you see it in an infection where you have a double L in it and the answer to that is yellow fever virus. So yes, Tories disease is seen in yellow fever. Okay, moving on to the next. Where do you see the Leibschultz bodies? So the Leibschultz bodies are inclusions which are usually seen with herpes simplex virus, both 1 and 2, as well as herpes zoster virus. So yes, this is something that you see uh, in um, herpes virus. So this is another one question that you have. One more question, then I teach you all of them all together. You have to do match the following with the, uh, you know, the virus and the different bodies that we've mentioned over here. So let us take up this question. If I say yellow fever, you'll say double L. So it has to be come somewhere over here. That is the Tories bodies. Fine. Then if I say molluscum contagiosum virus, I hope everyone knows Henderson Patterson bodies, which I'm going to teach you right now. Next, when I teach you foul pox, now guys remember when I say foul pox, so whenever we play any game like a basketball or a football, there's a foul that uh, the referee can give us. So foul is to do with ball, football and so on. So foul pox shows you which bodies? Bollinger bodies. Then we are left with two, that is vaccinia and variola. So vaccinia has the double C, so vaccinia is going to be the Warnery bodies, a very common confusion. Vaccinia is the Warnery bodies and then we come to variola and variola then becomes the Paschen bodies. Now these are questions that you've been getting since ages and I hope you'll be able to sort it out. Some of the images I'm yet to teach you. So for example and some of them are missing out here. So I'm going to complete that but I want you to finish the questions. Both intranuclear and intracytoplasmic bodies are seen in which organisms? So pox virus, herpes virus, measles or mumps. Remember both intranuclear and intracytoplasmic are seen in two conditions. Number one is CMV and number two is measles. Just these two that you have to remember for both intranuclear and intracytoplasmic. Here the option that we have is measles. So that's the answer that we mark. Now out of all of these, which are the images that I'm supposed to know? So the first image happens to be this and that is the owl eye inclusion. So uh, first and foremost, yes, as I see over here, uh, you've got a giant cell and in the same, you can very well appreciate that there are these blue color eyes. So remember in cytomegalovirus, the color of the inclusions that you're talking about is blue in color blue intranuclear inclusions and eyes. But if you also see, there's a cluster of intracytoplasmic inclusions that are present. So like I said, cytomegalovirus shows you the presence of intracytoplasmic as well as intranuclear inclusions. And which is the other organism? The other organism was measles. So I think we can discuss measles as well. Yes, measles also shows you both intranuclear 
and intracytoplasmic. So what are these? First and foremost, the name of the organism over here happens to be measles. Why? Because I'm seeing this giant cell. I've always made you remember, in measles, we see the warden finkelde giant cells. In measles, in measles, we see the warden finkelde giant cells. And this is a names question also that came in the previous years. So this is this huge giant cell that you have over here. So if I can draw it for all of you, this will be a giant cell with lots of nuclei. Inside every nucleus, you'll see a pink color dot, which will show you the intranuclear inclusions. In the cytoplasm also, you will see pink color dots and they will tell you intracytoplasmic inclusions. So see over here in the nucleus, you're seeing a dot and these are all intranuclear. In the cytoplasm, you're seeing dots. So these are intracytoplasmic. What other uh, bodies which I have not taught you right now but are very commonly asked. Another set of intracytoplasmic bodies are going to be the negri bodies. So can you see this huge cell over here? And in this cell within the cytoplasm if you focus you will be able to see these pink color bodies. So yes guys that is the negri bodies but don't worry it will not come as a spotter. Some history of a dog bite or some relevant bite animal bite history will be given to you and these negri body images which are in the cytoplasm will be given. Where are they seen? They are seen in the cerebellum and the hippocampus. What is the next image that you are supposed to see? And that is the very very characteristic this. So what is this guys? Over here if I see there is a very famous dermatology image where you see a cup shaped lesion. Here you have a cup shaped lesion and inside that cup shaped lesion you see that the epithelium has these pink color bodies extending from here right till the top. Everywhere you see these pink color bodies known as HP bodies. I hope everyone knows the full form. So we have HP stands for Henderson Patterson bodies. Henderson Patterson bodies and I just want all of you to know that there is a special stain which we study in pathology for these bodies and that is the phloxine tartar tartarate stain. So some people call it phloxine tartarate stain, some people call it uh, tartrazine that is entirely up to you. So there is a special stain that we have and that is Phloxine tartarate. Now I've got a small homework for you. Actually, I've got two homeworks for you today. So I know all of you have been religiously following the same and answering. So I'm really extremely impressed with the response and the enthusiasm that you guys have shown. The two homeworks that we have today is one HP bodies. I've already told you that one HP bodies are seen with molluscum contagiosum. That is the Henderson Patterson body. There's another HP bodies which you see with trachoma and they are different. So the full form is different. I've already told you the disease name. You take to tell me the full form of that HP body. That is your homework number one. What is your homework number two? The HP bodies that you see in molluscum contagiosum, I've told you the special stain is phloxine tartarate stain, right? The second homework for all of you is, so phloxine tartarate stain, number one stains the HP bodies. Number two, you guys are tell, going to tell me, there's another thing with P, these are cells of the GI tract that the phloxine tartarate stains. So remember, P for phloxine tartarate stains HP bodies and another cell in the GI tract that is with P. So what are your two homeworks? What's the name of the HP body seen with trachoma? And what's the other thing that the phloxine tartarate stain can stain? for all of us. I am looking forward to the answers. Hope you are going to get it. So guys, this was molluscum contagiosum where you see a cup shaped lesion with these HP bodies and we are sorted. Apart from that, what is the list that we are missing out on? So I have already told you out here. When we are so see, what all have we done? We have done yellow fever is going to show you Tori's bodies. Molluscum contagiosum, HP bodies done. Foul pox I have shown you which bodies? I have told you Bollinger bodies and for vaccinia versus variola, actually it is interchangeable but commonly vaccinia, CG, guarnieri and variola, pastion bodies. Apart from that, Leibschultz bodies are seen with herpes virus. Then over here, we had another question, which is a repeat, Tories is seen with yellow fever. Having done this, let's move on to the next set and answer. Match the virus with the appropriate shape. So yes, you need to tell me that which virus goes with which shape. So when I say rotavirus, it reminds you of a rotating wheel. Rotating wheel. So rotavirus, wheel-shaped virus. 
astro astro sounds like a star so astro virus is going to be a star shaped virus when i say ebola ebola sounds like bowl so ebola is going to be a bowl of spaghetti next pox pox is said to be pox in a box pox is a box so box means something like a brick right so remember pox virus is going to be a brick shaped virus and finally what's rabies rabies is a bullet shaped virus let's revise all of these and see some images so the first one that i have over here happens to be the first one that we have over here happens to be the bullet shaped virus so you can first and foremost guys are we looking at normal microscopy no we are looking at electron microscopy which is the black and white picture and here we have this we have the classical bullet shaped rabies virus so that is what is the first one that you have to know the second one is what has probably ruined 2 years of our life and a lot of lives otherwise and that is the corona virus so how does the corona virus look like it looks like a crown right corona means crown and it has these petal like peplomas it has these petal like peplomas that you've got next the virus that looks like a box so it actually looks like a box instead of a box i call it a brick and a brick is heavy right why is the box or the brick heavy because it has a dumbbell shaped dna core let's uh, try and zoom in and find out so you can very well appreciate there's a box shaped virus there's a brick or a box shaped virus and inside it you have a dumbbell shaped dna so box is a pox pox virus moving on to the next we have uh, this one which is the virus which is going to look like a bowl of spaghetti and that bowl of spaghetti is going to be ebola virus so reminding of spaghetti uh, just two days back i gave you homework regarding all the things in microbiology which can help you with that spaghetti appearance so if you've been asked about a bowl of spaghetti or something that's just filamentous like this your answer is going to be ebola however if you are asked where do we see the spaghetti and meatball appearance now that's something very very important when you are asked spaghetti and meatball appearance in the fungal organisms i'm not giving you homework because you guys had already guys had already told me spaghetti and meatball appearance in your uh, fungal organisms is seen with malassezia furfur we've seen the images spaghetti and meatball appearance in pap smear is seen with trichomonas plus leptospira trichomonas plus leptospira and a bowl of spaghetti just a bowl is seen with ebola coming to the next which is the one which looks like a wheel so rotating wheel rotating wheel so this looks like a round wheel with spokes it looks like a round wheel with spokes and yes this is what we have over here coming to the next which is the one which looks like a space vehicle very very important which is the one that is going to look like a space vehicle and it has a very unusual space so remember adenovirus how will you learn this adenovirus will remind you of aliens okay aliens and space vehicle so please remember adenovirus or i'll write it over here for your mnemonic alien or is going to show you the space vehicle pattern or you can say shape the next one is the easiest because here i'm seeing a classical star if i'm seeing a classical star yes this then happens to be the astro virus so i hope everyone is sorted with these shapes these are also done coming back to my question that seems pretty much sorted as well that when i'm talking about rota virus that's the rota virus 15 that's the rotating wheel astro virus happens to be the star so 2 2 third one ebola virus happens to be bowl of spaghetti so 3 4 pox virus pox in a box happens to be brick so 4 1 and fifth one rabies virus happens to be bullet shaped virus so that was your correct option okay so shapes are done bodies are done now let's move on to another set of questions and that is this both dna and rna are found in so remember both dna and rna is it a virioid a prion a plasmid or bacteria so first and foremost i know i have not taught you virioid and virion and all of those which i'll be teaching you gradually i hope everyone knows plasmid is made up of extra chromosomal dna apart from the usual it's extra chromosomal material 
Virioid is obviously going to comprise of uh, something to do with, see, Virioid is different, Virion is different and all of these obviously I'll be teaching you in the tomorrow session. But it doesn't have both DNA and RNA and that is what you can know for the time being, okay. Uh, what is prion? Prion is something that is to do with P, P for P. Prion is going to be a misfolded protein. So that also doesn't have both DNA and RNA. Bacterias are the one which have both DNA and RNA and that's the right answer. Coming to the next question is this. Dash contains a non-segmented genome. Non-segmented. I'm going to teach you mnemonics but I hope you can analyze what contains a non-segmented genome out of these. Paramyxovirus is non-segmented. The first three mentioned over here are segmented genomes. Next question. Double-stranded RNA. See, RNA is usually single-stranded. But here they are asking you, double-stranded RNA is found in. So, double-stranded. First and foremost, molluscum contagiosum and herpes virus should easily be ruled out because they happen to be DNA viruses. So, I have to choose between Rio and rabies. Rio virus is said to be the double-stranded RNA virus. One more question that we have. Negative sense RNA viruses or negative stranded RNA viruses use something during the replication process. So, there is a positive strand RNA virus, there is a negative strand RNA virus. The negative strand RNA virus uses RDRP. What is that? RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So, repeating, it uses RNA dependent RNA polymerase. I know we've done a lot of questions. So, why not revise all that I've taught you? So, guys, we've got two types of viruses. We have an RNA virus and we have a DNA virus. I'm not going into the classification right now. The entire classification I will be teaching you tomorrow. I'm giving you all the mnemonics and tomorrow I'm going to make you practice more questions on these mnemonics. So, remember when you're talking about viruses, either they are RNA or they are DNA and my general knowledge usually tells me that RNA viruses are supposed to be single stranded and DNA viruses are supposed to be double stranded. So all DNA viruses are double stranded except parvovirus which is single stranded DNA virus. So remember parvo, parvo is vo1. So that's the only DNA virus which doesn't have two strands, it has vo1. So it is single stranded DNA virus. Rest all DNA viruses are double stranded. Next rule, I am told that all the RNA viruses are supposed to have one copy. They are supposed to have one copy of unsegmented, see there are no segments out here, unsegmented single stranded RNA virus. So, all the RNA viruses will have a single copy which is going to be unsegmented and single stranded. One copy, one strand, no segment. However, please remember which is the one. So, now we will keep changing, you know, we will do exceptions in each one of these. If I say which is the one which instead of having uh, one copy is going to have Two copies, everything is the same. Two copies, but it's still going to be single stranded. But just that the top copies have now become two and that is going to be retrovirus. So, you will remember it as RET2 virus. Instead of retrovirus, remember it as RET2 virus. That RET2 virus has two copies of single stranded RNA. Then, all of them are going to be single stranded, but which is the one which is, see, everything then is going to be the same. Or one copy hi hoga, unsegmented maybe, but right now I'm talking about the one which is not going to be single stranded, the one which is going to be double stranded. So double stranded one is the double stranded one is the Rio virus. I hope all of you know Rio virus contains nothing but the rotavirus. What is rotavirus? Rotavirus causes which disease in infants, young children? Rotavirus causes diarrhea. Rotavirus causes diarrhea. So remember, the diarrhea wala RNA virus, the diarrhea wala RNA virus is double stranded. So rota, diarrhea wala double stranded. Rest all RNA viruses are single stranded. Next, I say all of them, let's look at the third exception. All of them are unsegmented. So you'll ask me, which are the RNA viruses which can be segmented? For segmented, we've got a mnemonic that's Bira. I will not on an online platform want to say, but a lot of students would be able to uh, relate to what this mnemonic is. And segmented RNA viruses are seen with B for Bunya virus, I for influenza virus, 
R for rotavirus and A for arena virus. Repeating, bunya, influenza, rota, arena. And don't you believe now that rotavirus is going to be a null time exception? Usually RNA viruses are unsegmented, but rota is segmented. Usually RNA viruses are single stranded, but rota is that diarrhea wala thing, so it is double stranded also. So it's a double stranded segmented RNA virus. So repeating, how many segments do they have? There's a no good range that you need to know. But please remember, bunya virus, the way you write B is the same way you write 3. So bunya virus has three so i'll write it for all of you again if you've written bunya virus out of bunya virus i'm going to highlight the three so it has three next you have influenza virus next you have influenza virus in influenza virus i'm going to draw an eight over here so it has eight segments now add three plus eight add three plus eight you get eleven so rotavirus rotavirus has eleven segments and then add one plus one Two. So, arena virus has total of two segments. Repeating for all of you in case you got confused. Bunya virus, influenza virus, rota virus, arena virus. Bunya virus, three segments. So, you got a three from here. Influenza virus is going to be eight segments. Three plus eight, eleven in rota virus. One plus one, two segments in arena virus. I hope all the mnemonics are clear so I can revisit my questions. Number one, I had this question out here. Dash contains a non-segmented genome. So you will say the segmented ones are Bira. The segmented ones are Bira. Bunya virus is not mentioned. Influenza virus or orthomyxovirus makes sense. R for the Rio or the rotavirus makes sense. A for arena virus, again, these are all segmented. Paramyxovirus is non-segmented. Okay, so that is what was asked over here. Coming to the next question. Double-stranded RNA virus. You will say all the RNA viruses are single-stranded, but the diarrhea one, the one that is causing diarrhea is going to be the double-stranded one. That is the rotavirus. Rota, Rio virus causes diarrhea. Coming to the next this is what I am yet to teach you. Negative stranded RNA viruses use RNA dependent RNA polymerase. I know it's a very tough thing that is drawn over here and I don't want you to get confused. Guys, for example, if this is an RNA, if this is an RNA, I am saying this is a positive strand RNA. Why am I calling it positive strand? Because this ribosome will come and easily read it. The ribosome is going to come and from the... Um, you know, 5 prime to 3 prime is going to go and read it and it's going to form proteins. Everything is simple. But when I say something is a negative stranded RNA virus, negative strand, ribosome cannot read it. First, the negative strand is converted into a positive strand RNA virus and then the ribosome is going to come and read it and cause the protein synthesis. So, how does this conversion from negative to positive occur? By RNA dependent RNA polymerase. So, repeating positive one can be read directly. Negative RNA, negative stranded RNA virus needs to be converted by RDRP and then it is read. So, the question that you get over here is most of, most of the RNA viruses are the positive ones which can be read easily except for Mr. Fab. Mr. Fab are negative. What is Mr. Fab? Mixovirus, rabies virus, filovirus, arena virus, and Bunya virus. Repeating for all of you, one more mnemonic. So, one more mnemonic is going to be Mr. Fab. So, Mr. Fab is going to be the negative sense RNA viruses. So, the most common ones are positive. Mr. Fab is negative. So, repeating, Mixo, Rabies, Philo, Arena, Bunya. Remember, Mixo, Rabies. Again, very important. Don't get confused with the mnemonics. Philo and then Arena and Bunya. Arena and Bunya from the same segmented virus. Wale. So, Arena and Bunya virus are also negative cells. So, I hope with these today's set of questions are clear to all of you. I have kept the session very short so that we can have another session tomorrow. Tomorrow, we take up the entire classification. We take up the methods of replication and the different cell lines that you have to know in general virology. I want all of you to revise this last set of mnemonics that I have told you because it's genuinely 
going to help you in the exam. These are quick questions which we should not get wrong. Thanks a ton for joining in guys. All the students who are interested in the plus subscription, these are the ones that you need to follow whether it is for plus with Unacademy or whether it is for Iconic with Unacademy and Prep Ladder. That's the code that can help you join and I'm looking forward to the homework that I had given to all of you. So waiting to know whether you know the different types of HP bodies and whether you know homework number two that is what is the other stain that we use for or what is the other thing that we use for staining with floxine tartarate. Thanks a lot guys. See you again at 10 o'clock today because we'll be having IOTD image of the day on the YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.